four years ago, I was running out of pasture. When we had a dry, when we had a drought or a dry spell, I was having to buy hay. We spent like a, over hay. over ten thousand dollars the year we had the drought to buy hay because we had too many cattle. We had we were running about a hundred head of cattle. They weren't uh, in shape to go to market, and then we didn't have the feed for them. And I was I was feeding about twice the hay that I feed now. Currently, we're running I have fifty head of cattle. That includes uh, forty nine cows and one bull. Uh, one breeding bull have about 20 calves on there right now that are just about ready to go to go to market. Uh, we have had we have already sold about 15 or 20 calves. Have like uh, five of those 50 are heifers that are that are just now being bred. They're not there. They haven't had their first calves yet. So uh, that's about the number we try to keep so that in the winter time, I also do the uh, breeding on a schedule most of the time. I did last year and I really like that uh, so that your cattle are all ready to market. They're, they're uh, grown mostly when the months are not so cold and when it's not so hot. So they produce better, their mothers produce better. And uh, we feed them uh, with the hay. We grow uh, six to seven acres of corn and we mix our own feed. We grind it and put in some minerals and all that. And we all the time keep them the mineral supplements, the salt, and the Raybon blocks, the Crystal X blocks. We had the well dug and we had to put in electricity, which works, which works fine because now I have lights in the barn and all that if I've got a cow that we need to take to the barn and get a vet of a night. So that works out well too. And they put a watering tank up on top of the hill, the highest point in the field, and it gravity flows the water down to uh, the three watering tanks. And if you have a problem, it's very easy. You can take and shut it off in any area. The one's going to any watering tank, shut it off, clean it, see where the problem is. And you know, it, it's very easy to maintain. And that's the thing about the fences and the watering tank too, the watering system too. You don't, you're not completely shut down if you have a problem with one area. Before we hit instituted the rotational grazing and all that the field was just one big field and they drank out ponds. and they drank out of the pond, ponds actually. yeah two ponds one was very polluted and so we we were watering from two ponds and so now we have a well dug and we have three watering tanks and these watering tanks are positioned so that you can actually water the cattle from two different paddocks it goes on each side and you can water them from two different paddocks. The cows drink a lot more water. They don't have to travel as far to get a drink of water. That's, that's one of the main things. <laughs> they don't have to walk as far to get water. And they maintain their weight better. Uh, they learn from this rotational grazing that as soon as you go to the gate and start calling them, they're getting new grass. Now we can spot bush hog and take care of the unwanted weeds and things that come up. Just let the cows graze and get the grass and then go back and set the bush hog high and spot bush hog and it takes care of it. Now the pigweed is down in the little small areas uh, and manageable. Uh, but where it used to, used to wasn't, unless you mowed the whole entire field, it was not manageable. When we put in the three waterers, like I said earlier, one waterer waters can water two different paddocks. You can water from two different paddocks on the one waterer. So we have the field cut into six different paddocks and we rotate. You know, some at first we started out leaving them in for two weeks at a time and now we've gone to rotating. They might stay a week, they might stay three or four days. You know, I just make sure, watch the grass and make sure it doesn't get too low. And also the one of the greatest benefits of the paddocks is, you know, when I have uh, heifers or cattle that are going to calve or something, I only have to look out for one lot. I can come to this lot, whichever lot they're in, and, and in just a few minutes, I can tell you if that cow's there or not. I can look for her and I can spot her if she has trouble. So much easier than trying to cover the whole 132 acres. And the fencing is with 15,000 volts, I think is the most that I've had going through here. It's also cut down on predators such as coyotes, uh, dogs, wild dogs getting in here. And one time we had a real problem with that, us and all of our neighbors did. And it's just been very beneficial in so many ways. 
use the stepping post and, and just in a matter of a half hour or less, you can just make you a temporary fence around them. And once they've gotten used to this electric fence, they respect the temporary fence because they think they're gonna get hit. And then you just, you utilize your pasture, they will do better weed control. There's many benefits to, to the rotational grazing besides cutting down on the time that you are, that you have to actually feed your cattle. But when I feed my cattle, I do it exactly like this, winter and summer. My daddy taught me a long time ago because you could see the difference in hills. Where he'd say, get on top of a hill and roll it out. It will make your, uh, it'll make your job easier as far as rolling that bale of hay. And it will also reseed as it's going back down through there. In years past, before the rotational grazing, we would begin feeding our cattle in like October, late October, and we would feed all the way up through about the middle of April. And now I've cut the grazing down. I stockpile the two back lots. I bring the cattle out of there on August the 15th, and I don't turn them into those two lots again until November the 15th. Uh, last year, I just turned them in one lot at a time and I let them graze for two weeks in each lot. And that took me through Christmas. Then I started feeding hay in January and I quit uh, the end of March. I might've fed just a few bales sporadically in April, but it has cut it down from six months to three to four months. And I think as we go along, the more I utilize it and the more I do the plans of, of doing the temporary fences and things like that, that I can actually get down to feeding less than 100 rolls of hay. Visiting your local soil conservation office and your natural resources services center is the best way to do a farm plan. That You have guidelines that you must go by, but the guidelines are only guidelines that are beneficial to you as a farmer, to you, to your herd, and, and to your bottom line. And if you follow these guidelines, then, and, and you qualify for the assistance, then the natural resources, the EQIP programs, the TDA programs, and now I'm on my third year of CSP. And you know, I have a very little investment on my own, maybe 15, probably 1,500 to $2,000 investment on my own on all these projects. And I didn't do, and I didn't do uh, the labor on them either. A lot of people can save, you know. A lot of men, uh, they will save some of the some of the costs because they'll do their own labor. But I couldn't do the fencing and things myself, so everything was done was hired to be done by contractors.